And we are back here on the Midweek Mailbag with myself, Jeremy Reisman, and Eric Schlitt, uh, managing editor of Pride of Detroit. Let's go back to Twitch for some more questions here. Um, Bobby Grimes asked an interesting question here. Eric or Jeremy, what do you think the Lions do with that open roster spot? They uh, they waived... Um, Stanley Berryhill. Stanley Berryhill, who I definitely remember who what his name is because he's been such uh, an impactful player on the seven starting teams. gunner, starting gunner well, last I mean, two weeks. Yeah, just I mean, saying. The Lions just never decide to punt anyway. So, um, <laughs> all right. So yeah, it's an interesting question. They they have an open roster spot. What do you think they do? Mm. They, I, I think I think we both agree we probably aren't going to find out until Saturday because it seems like Correct. they really like to wait to do it. But uh, what, what's your what's your running theory right now? Uh, My guess is they're holding it for Cabinda, and if Cabinda is not ready, they're going to do exactly what they did last weekend, and they're going to elevate another offensive skill player uh, or a couple offensive skill players, sign a skill player that they're going to eventually cut on Monday uh, in order to write, and uh, I think that's that's the plan. It all hinges on Cabinda. Uh, If he's ready, he gets a spot, and away you go. Uh, But if he's not ready, I think they play this – this uh, roller coaster game and on and off and on and off until he is. Yeah. And so I'm looking at the practice squad. Obviously they, they want to use their elevations if they can, but you only get three elevations. Yeah. And, and by elevations, I mean, they just, they literally just bump up to the active roster for the game and drop right back down to the practice squad. It doesn't require signing a 53 man contract. Um, and so I mean, I, they've elevated Maurice Alexander twice. Yep. Brandon Zilstra twice. Yep. Stanley Barry Hill once signed him to the active roster once, uh, and they've Shane Zilstra yeah. once as well. He was on the active roster of the, the weeks one through three. So that's if you're wondering why you remember seeing him. So they've played this game of putting guys on the roster and taking them off of uh, several times this year. Cause like Alexander, he's played in what four games, but he only has two elevations because they've been Signing sneaky. And, yeah. Yeah. It's, I, it's clever. And so I, you, you bring up Shane Zilstra and I think that's kind of an interesting one, right? Because, yeah, they not only elevated him last week; they played him a lot. They played him more than they played him, James Mitchell. And so mm-hmm. I'm wondering, do you think there's there's an opportunity there? There's a chance that they view him as tight end two, and and he'll eventually get signed to the 53. No, I think he's. I think that they have Brock Wright yep. tight end one, yep. and then they have two reserves that they value equally. Okay. And if and if Kabinda comes back. Cabinda can fill that same role. Sure. That's what's like 16 snaps, thir- t- you know, between 13, and 16 snaps. And uh, James Mitchell is taking snaps. You know, look, last week he doubled his output for the whole season and uh, caught a touchdown pass. So, uh, yeah, that 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 is my uh, my assumption is that they're going to when Cabinda comes back that kind of shakes up the the need. I do like Zilstra. They they like Zilstra. Obviously they threw him a touchdown. Um but I think he is he's holding that spot for Cabinda right now. Do you, were you surprised that they played Zilstra as much as they did? More than James Mitchell. I feel, I feel like we the, the general consensus was oh, that James oh. Mitchell is going to see a pretty significant bump and he like you said he did a mm-hmm. little bit, but I think I think at least to me I was a little bit surprised to see Zilstra who's been on the practice squad and, and granted like he's more ready, right? He's been, he's been practicing every week. Yeah. Um, which I think is important to them. He's, you know, he's familiar with the offense from last year. Um, but yeah. I, I think, I think maybe that was just wishful thinking a little bit that they're, they're still kind of easing in James Mitchell a little bit. And I just, I was hoping mm-hmm. he'd get more playing time than he did. Sure. Look, I mean, you gotta remember he's a fifth round pick that's coming off in an ACL. Yeah. So like it's, I guess maybe we're getting spoiled, by looking at like Malcolm Rodriguez and like yeah. as a six round pick and, and, and Kirby who's sure. playing every snap and, and uh, you know, realistically we've talked about this before. If you get three rookie starters, then you're happy. Well, they have four rookie starters just on defense. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like uh, you're, you're getting, you're getting spoiled right now by the young guys uh, stepping up. Fair enough. Um, Speaking of rookies stepping up, McVeigh Rob asked, was Kirby Joseph performance surprising? The dude had a game on Sunday. I look, he's been getting closer and closer and closer, right? So yeah. like you you knew eventually he was going to secure one. Uh I don't think I thought it was going to come against Aaron Rodgers, uh, <laughs> right. much less getting much less getting two. Sure. Right? But that that cut underneath 
was just stupid Incredible. on that second interception. That first interception, I screenshot where he was when Rodgers threw the ball, and he was blocking at the five-yard line, right? Like he was – and then he – ball goes up, he, he disengages, comes back, and then out jumps everybody to get the ball. Like, he just has a nose. He just has a nose for, for where that ball is. And he's and so you could tell he was getting closer and closer. Uh, the PBUs are, are showing up. Uh, so, yeah, a little surprising it came against that situation and that productive, but you could tell he's he was headed this way for, uh, you know, for a while now. Yeah, he's definitely trending up. I would say not that surprised that he had a good performance definitely like if you would have told me in in september i would have been surprised <laughs> because yeah. i i thought the track for kirby joseph was probably not going to play in 2022 like maybe get on some special teams maybe get some sub package and and granted mm -hmm. injuries have forced him in the lineup so so but but even if you were to tell me kirby joseph is they're gonna they're they, they're forced to play him in week five being like oh well he's probably gonna struggle for the first couple months of the season might look good towards the end, but I don't expect him to play that well in his rookie year because it's new to the position, very mm -hmm. new to the position. And so to see him hit the ground running like this is, is extremely encouraging. And so uh, I would say that part is surprising to me, but given what we've seen out of him from the first four starts that he had of the season, I, I'm not that surprised at, at what happened yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. Next question. Uh, also coming from Twitch. Uh, I don't know how to say your name. We'll just, Ask the question, is Jerry Jacobs now CB2 for the rest of the season? No. I think he's going to be – potentially could turn into that. Yeah. I don't think he's there yet. Um, if we're being honest uh, and we're talking about all their corners, I think Will Harris is the guy that they have the most confidence in. Now they're using Will in the slot right now, yep. but there's going to be situations where they're going to want to put him back outside. Um, but I do think Jerry might have jumped jumped Mike Hughes, right? I thought Jerry played better than Mike Hughes he did. Uh, did, and I think they love him to death. So could Jerry be corner three and still start? Yes, he could. Uh, but I think if they're putting two corners on the field, my guess is it's a Cuda and, uh, and uh, Will Harris right now. Yeah. I don't, I don't know because, well, yeah, I think you're right. I think they prefer right now, Will Harris in, in the nickel. I think they like him there. I think they want to keep him there. If they're going yeah. to a two, what two, a, a non nickel set. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think, I think it might be Jerry, but, but it's worth pointing out mm -hmm. that, that Dan Campbell also praised Mike Hughes a lot in his post game. He did. Um, so I think, I think he's happy. With, I think, I think we can all agree here that pending injury, we may have seen the last of Vamani, right? In well, a I called uniform. that last week. I, I'm on that, on that other podcast that I'm on. <laughs> I, uh, I had a lot to say about that, but, but and, yeah, I uh, mean, you're right. Right. They, yeah, Amani had one defensive snap in this game. I don't remember where it came from, but I, mm. I, I think they like three or four guys better than him right now. And assuming all of them don't get don't get injured and knock on wood, they they very well could, given how the secondary sure. has played out. Um, sure. I I think we've seen Amani start his last game as, as a Detroit Lion. I I agree with you completely, and, and 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 let me let me add a little bit more context to why I think they like Will Harris. And we talked about this. Uh, when it was happening during the game uh, and I want to bring it up again, is that this, the idea of how they're using their defensive backs against the run where you're filtering and then, and then closing yeah. will Harris gives them the best option to fill that role, like a, a opposite of a Cuda. So sure. when, when Harris is out there, even whether he's in nickel or whether he's on the outside um, when they want to run their scheme and they uh, start closing off that outside they need a corner who can come in and hit and tackle and Will's the second best one on the team that can do Jerry's that. not that far behind though. He had a nice no, TFL. No, he no, had no, a great no, TFL. No, and I mean, and, and Jer guy. Look, Jerry's Jerry's confident as, as anyone. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm not trying to discount Jerry here. And I, if, if it's coming off that way, that's not my intention. Um, I'm just saying, I think this is the change in scheme and how they use their corners now is custom made for will harris fair um duck line asks looking ahead to chicago do you think the offense bounces back against the skeleton crew defense in chicago 
I mean, you got to hope, right? <laughs> if you're hoping for a victory, this this is this is it. That's um, how they, yeah, that, they're going to have to keep pace, right? This this has the feelings of a, mm-hmm. of a shootout. Yeah, their 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 line is not very good. Their their front seven's not very good, uh, and they traded away two of their best in that front seven as well, which yep. is you know, further complicating things. They have, you know, they have good safeties. Uh, corners are, are not bad at either, uh, which. But again, like we've we've seen defenses that are bad against the run, and the Lions don't always run against them, right? And so. You've got to hope that they've learned from that, and, and that when you have a defense that's presents a problem in the, in that front seven, that's where you attack. And so, um, yeah, look, if you get the run game going and, and and you start you know making noise and you start causing those safeties to pinch, that's going to help things out when you want to open the pass game up. But they they absolutely have to get the run game going in order to get the offense back on track. Interesting to note, um, those of you that believe in DVOA, that, that like DVOA, Chicago's defense is 31st. 30th against the pass, 28th against the run. So bad in both areas. Much worse than the Lions, by the way, which I think yeah. we all have opinions about the Lions' uh, defense overall. Um, mm-hmm. Bears are technically worse at both, I think. Um, yeah. So it. I, I think I think for the Lions, it just depends on health. Like This team is, is very much performing based on who's available. If you don't have Josh Reynolds, if you don't have DJ Chark, if you have DeAndre Swift on a, on a pitch count and you no longer have TJ Hawkinson, well, guess what? Jared Goff ain't going to play very well. It's, you know, um, it's just the, the, the fact of the situation. And then, I mean, mm-hmm. you saw at the beginning of the year, I know DJ Chark wasn't producing, but he was out there and he was allowing Josh Reynolds to be in his more natural position and everyone else to be in their more natural position. And, and Hawkinson was there and Swift was, was healthier and they're scoring 30 points mm-hmm. a game. Well, okay. You take that away and, and I don't have to keep repeating it every week, but Jared Goff very much relies on a good support system. And if he doesn't have it, he's not able to elevate his crew. And so you're, you're not getting Chark back this week. Swift might be trending in the right direction to get more than six touches a game, but mm-hmm. TJ's not coming back. Josh Reynolds. We'll see. I think I think there's probably optimism there that that Josh is, is going to come back this week, but I don't know. I'm not I'm not very confident in in the Lions' offense right now, just because I think their weapons aren't there. Well, I'll tell you what. Amon Ra versus Kyler Gordon, the Bears' slot, is going to be fun. Now, Kyler played at Washington, right? Pac-12, so he's faced off against Amon Ra. Amon Ra knows him, and he's going to know how to attack him. He's not playing very well. While the rest of the secondary is playing well, he's not He's not playing so much. That's the matchup that you need to try and exploit if, if you're Jared Goff. Run the ball, feed Amon Ra. I mean, like, this This is the game plan every week, right? I mean, and it, and it should be. But the the strength of your offense is better than where their, their defense can't offset the strength of your offense is what I, I guess I'm getting at here. Fair enough. Um so we got news today that uh, that Jameson Williams not expected to play until December, according to Dan Campbell on 97 won the ticket. Um, a couple people have asked questions and, and expressed concern about this. Um, some looking to Odell Beckham, uh, a guy who tore his ACL, what, in the playoffs? Right? In, in yeah, the Super Bowl, right? or a little bit. Was it in the Super Bowl? No, I think it was before. Either way, but maybe um, yeah. right around that time, a month-ish after JMO, and, and now he's cleared to play. Some people mm-hmm. are, are wondering – is this something that we should be concerned about? Is, is maybe JMO a, a guy that's slower to rehab from injury or, or are lines just being extra careful? What, what's your take there? I, I think the lines are, are being extra careful one, yep. uh, but two, even if he is slower, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a trend that carries over to maybe other injuries that he might suffer in the future. It just means sure. this particular one is, is maybe slower than, than recovery than other people. So I, I think you get into problems when you're, when you start setting expectations of recovery versus, um, you know, other players, like, you know, when, when it was, it was cam Akers, right. Who came back from the Achilles and like, yep. whatever. And like, everybody was like, Holy cow. And yep. I mean, like, and then Akuda takes a little longer, but I mean, look at the Cuda now. I mean, the Cuda's playing great, right? And how's, and I don't know. I mean, is Cam Akers doing that good? He didn't look like a, he kind of, I mean, they're talking about getting rid him. of him. And yeah. Yeah. And like, he's wanting more playing time. They're not playing him, right? And so 
maybe he did he rush back early you know that's probably what the rams fans are sitting there wondering right, right. and but then at the same time you've got um you've got uh romeo who hasn't come back at all and we don't know when he's going to come back but again different body type different stress on that joint or on that on that achilles and so um it just there's different recovery times for different size players and expectations so i i i think you set yourself up for disappointment when you if you compare injuries because they're just they're not alike and 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 it's very subjective to each player in my opinion yeah i'm with you too and i I think it is worth pointing out that the lines are just being extra cautious because they can like yeah they they know behind the scenes right that Mm -hmm. this the season isn't isn't going to result in playoffs so why rush it and i think there is a fair discussion to have and maybe that's something we'll we'll talk about down the road of of whether it's even worth to to play jameson this season if you're only going to get four or five games out of him um, but at the same time, like, I think, I think they do want him to get his feet wet. And I think they just want to be extra sure because you invested a lot in this guy. You're mm-hmm. not going to be investing that much in OBJ for a half season. Right. So yeah. maybe, maybe you're hurrying that process along a little bit. Jameson's around for at least the next four seasons, hopefully a lot longer than that. So you don't want to do anything to jeopardize that, especially during a season that that's not going to matter. But, and, and again, that can be used as an argument not to play him at all this year. And maybe, and, and I, I, I certainly understand that argument. And, and again, we're probably going to be talking about this a lot. Um, once, yeah. once he starts practicing, but, um, you know, I, 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 in general, I think it's important to at least give him some reps. So he's not coming off, um, you know, into next year, just completely fresh slate. Yep. I'm with you. Um, okay. I think we have time for about one more here. Uh, let's go to Nick, the Lions fan. This is an interesting one because I do think this is kind of an unknown here. Uh, we know Brett Holmes is, uh, good at drafting. Are we nervous about how he will handle his first free agency with actual money to spend this year? (laughs) Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the, they've been targeting a certain level of player previously. And so now that they're targeting or potentially, targeting a higher level will they be more aggressive will they pick the right one i mean i, I mean it's i think it's hard to tell it, yeah. it really is i i'm not concerned because i i mean i i, I guess i he hasn't done anything that's that's made me overly concerned like he hasn't given he didn't give a five-year contract to a richard perryman you know what i mean right. they gave him one year deal it didn't work out and it wasn't that much money and so i i He's been relatively cautious so far, um, so I, I, I'm not too panicked on it. Yeah, I mean, I, there's no reason to panic yet. I think there's mm-hmm. reason to be nervous, for sure. I yeah. mean, he hasn't been particularly good at it yet. And yes, they haven't had a ton of money to maneuver, but they could have made something work. Like, if they wanted mm-hmm. um, Marcus Williams, they could have made something work, for sure. Yeah, it I, but I... Right. I think their their long term vision though was definitely precluded them from do, wanting to Probably. to make a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Um and and you know, the one deal that they the one quote unquote big deal that they've made so far is, is the DJ Shark movement. Obviously yeah. that didn't work out. Um and Well, we're halfway through the season, but so far, yeah. Not working out as as much as you would like. <laughs> at all. We can say <laughs> yeah. at all, right? I mean well, it hasn't worked yeah. out. And and it's going to cost them a little bit down the line too. The, the way they formatted that that um, that contract, he's actually cost, it's costing the team more next year than than the, he did this year. And again, all of that is under the um, under the the cap situation, which yeah. was what it was. They they, they had to kick yeah. some stuff down the road. So yeah. I don't know. It's it's a good question. It's it's still. I mean, basically, he's just incomplete, right? If you're if you're making a Brad Holmes yeah. report card, his free agency grade is still very much incomplete. So it, it'll be interesting. It'll add a level of excitement to the off season, which seems like we've got a lot of questions about the off season, which is not what I was expecting after a win, but, uh, but I totally understand it. Um, but <laughs> I think we're going to close things out there. We'll stick around for our Twitch live audience a little bit longer to answer some extra questions, but for you podcast listeners, thank you for listening. Be sure to rate and subscribe and all that on uh, whatever platform you're listening to this. And again, ch- check out our Movember campaign on Pride to see how you can support the Alzheimer's association. Um, we're also going to put up some, uh, some, 
donate uh, uh, auction items, uh, including some signed footballs from Lions players. Um, so be on the lookout for all of that on prideofdetroit.com. But until then, thank you for joining us. My name's Jeremy. That's Eric over there. Other way. That way. <laughs> <laughs> it's chaos. Be kind.